What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you guys today's video. And today we're talking about some general attacking tips. Five things that I see all the time that people do. And these things, avoiding them, getting them out of your vocabulary offensively, can really improve your attacking skills. Um, I see this people in my Discord server, and also just in One Hive Genesis and other people in the clan family, in the clans I'm in. Uh, so it's these are common mistakes people make. So we're gonna go through, talk about um, how you guys can improve your attacking skills. Very simple stuff you can implement right away. Let's get right into it though. Sorry I haven't been uploading for a while. I've been really, really busy. But um, here we are. Okay, so the first one is troop price for funnels. It seems like this is something that people um, I'd say especially it's like the less experienced attackers where it really is most prevalent, but people oftentimes just don't bring the the, nece the right funnel troops. And oftentimes that's in the form of bringing like, you know, a baby dragon when only a wizard is needed for the funnel, or uh, maybe using a P.E.K.K.A. when only like a giant and two wizards are needed. Really, you should be, it should be a battle every time you need to uh, think about how much troop space you're going to bring. You should be thinking in your head, going back and forth, okay, can I do it with a Valk? Can I do it with just a wizard and a barbarian to tank? I mean, guys, these the troop spaces, um, even like a small five troop space difference makes a huge difference um, because you can bring an extra balloon or an extra hog or something. Um, so really, you want to think these through. Um, you should almost think of it it's like Congress, like they are not going to give out any more money than is needed, if, if only that was actually true. Um, but don't give out any more troop space than is absolutely needed for a funnel. Um, that's as much as I want to say on that topic. The second one I think is even more important, uh, people oftentimes use their uh, hero abilities at bad times. And it's the king, the queen, and the grand warden. Typically for the king, um, the mistake I see is using it too late. That's, I think that's one of the only ways you can really mess up your king's ability, is using it too late. Um, and I, I, w Typically what happens is the king gets locked onto by a bunch of defenses, he's, he's going down, you pop the ability, he regenerates health, but he dies before his entire ability duration has uh, gone through its course therefore the barbarians around him assuming they're still alive uh, are no longer getting the raged effect and it's not uh, getting the full value of the king's ability so I think typically um, as soon as the king is low enough in most circumstances as soon as the king is low enough that popping his ability won't bring him entirely back up to full health so we're talking around maybe like half health, maybe even a little above that. You want to hit the ability, unless you're suspecting a giant bomb he's about to go over, which will kill the barbarian, then you might want to wait and let him trigger it um, on his own. But generally speaking, uh, use that ability early rather than late. Now for the uh, queen, what I see is people using her ability um, when she's about to move and switch buildings, the point of the queen's ability, um, of course, is when she's you know gonna go down. She's taking fire to protect her. But oftentimes you have a little bit of discretion to use it. You know when she's being targeted at half health, when she has a sliver of health left. And the answer to that is you want to use it when she's locked onto a high HP building to something that she's gonna be shooting at for a long time without moving a lot in between because she doesn't move any faster when she's under her cloak. Therefore, um, the the most value you're gonna get is popping it so you get all of those extra high DPS hits while she's using her ability um, on actual buildings instead of having her uh, in the state of being able to deal a lot of damage but actually moving between buildings and not even dealing any damage. So use it when she's about to lock on to a storage, to an expo, to the town hall, um, assuming she's under fire and you're going to have to use it at some point anyway. Um, sometimes I'll mean using it earlier, sometimes I'll mean using it later, it depends on the situation. As far as the Grand Warden goes, um, you want to hit his ability right as things are about to pop. Right as your kill squad, whatever it is going to the base, your balloons are about to hit a rage, hit a haste, and just leap forward in the base, triggering new traps, bringing on new defenses, and spreading out more than your spells can cover. 
Oftentimes people use the warden when their troops hit an ice golem in the CC, when they're caught up on a few CC troops uh, that aren't ice golems, they're caught up on a defensive hero, whatever. That's when you want to use your heal spell. When everything's together, if you have the luxury of having a heal spell, which sometimes you will, sometimes you won't, but that's a good place to use the heal spell. When things are close together, they're going to be stagnant, you know, they're just kind of hanging out. If you have healers, they can do the job anyway. Use the warden as things are popping, as they're moving outwards. Um, that's when you can get the most value because they'll be taking on new traps, new defenses, all kinds of stuff, um, which is going to get you a lot more value. The heal spell, if you have it, won't be uh, as effective because they'll be running out of it. They'll be taking on too much damage uh, for the heal spell to work, stuff like that. So the warden, you really want to, as soon as your troop's about to burst forward, that's when you use it and spread out. Okay, um, the next one, third one, I always see is, and this is like my pet peeve, it always has been, people being too stingy with their heal spells. This is for hogs and for miners mainly. It, it's ridiculous, but sometimes you see people like trying to cover so many defenses or so many buildings uh, leading the miners or the hogs along their path that they don't actually cover where the miners and hogs currently are. I'm not a big fan of pre-healing. I think that oftentimes uh, you're just wasting a uh, healing effect that would otherwise be dealt throughout the duration um, rather than wasting like a few seconds before they even get into the heal. But more importantly, um, sometimes like you're the, only the very tip of it reaches out and like half the hogs or the miners don't even get in it. You definitely want to err on the side of just get all your current troops that are still alive right now, get those in it first, then worry about how far uh, forward it can heal them, because sometimes the heal spell will run out before they even leave its radius, so it, it didn't really matter how far it reached as long as it kind of, you know, wasn't totally the other way. So uh, for your heal spells, um, yes, it's good to try to get so that, that you lead the heal so they uh, are just being healed by the very edge of it, and they kind of move through the heal as they go, so you get the entire benefit of it. But um, you want to have some factor of safety there and you want to err a little bit on the side of getting everything healed, especially for miners um, when they're more spread out than hogs usually. Get everything healed first and then maybe see if you can fit a few extra buildings along their path in it later. Okay, um, fourth one. And this is something I've made videos on in the past. For a Laloon attack when you're using balloons, using hounds, um, a lot of it you can kind of plan out in advance. So I don't understand why uh, a lot of times we see in an attack where kind of the kill squad goes as planned, the queen charge goes as planned, whatever it is, then you start the Laloon part of the attack and it's like hounds, then like three seconds later the hastes are dropped, then like three seconds later finally the balloons are dropped. Meanwhile, like one of the hounds has already popped, the other one's like at half health. Really, um, there's no excuse for not at least putting your balloons down slightly before your lava hounds if you have the space to do it. That way, the balloons are slow, they'll get a few tiles in, the lava hounds will pass them, so they'll still end up tanking, but the balloons will be a lot closer, there won't be as much wasted time with the hounds sitting in the middle of the base, tanking nothing. That's a big thing that we see sometimes. And also, if you want to take it a step further, which I think you definitely should with your haste spells, the first thing you can drop is the haste. Um, you already know where your first few haste are going to be based on where the defenses are laid out. So drop those guys ahead of time. Then you can drop your hounds and your balloons. And you don't have to worry about then switching to your haste, then switching back to balloons. It's all right there. So everything is just moving forward automatically. They last a pretty long time too, the haste spells. I think like 20, 25 seconds, something like that. I am yet to, and I've done a lot of pre-hasting, a lot of like very early hasting, I am yet to have a haste spell run out on me before my balloons made it in. I'm yet to have that happen. So just be aware of that guys. Um, don't like, take forever for your haste spells, but generally speaking, uh, you can drop them pretty early um, and, and get away with it. All right, last tip is for the wall wrecker. It's kind of a specific one, but sometimes people send the wall wrecker on a path that's just going to hit a bunch of storages. 
I know it's a little bit difficult to predict the exact route the wall record will take, but especially if you're dropping it and it's only going to go like, you know, a, a small way through the base, you can drop it a little bit to one side and have it avoid, you know, high HP buildings and just take the path that goes through dead space or lower buildings and uh, gets through more walls. So don't drop it right on a storage unless that's intentional for it to kind of, you know, take its time and tank or something. Um, oftentimes just dropping it slightly differently and kind of, you know, drawing a line across your screen, whatever you have to do to see how it's going to path towards the town hall, that will get you another layer deeper into the base which can really make the difference in certain attacks. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you're liking the update. Um, more videos to come, so uh, stay tuned. Keep your eye on the channel. Uh, thanks for watching this one though, and I'll see you guys next time as this attack comes to an end. Bisectatron out.